Gameloft is a titan of the mobile game industry, and they got that status by ripping off games by more popular developers or making cheap cash grabs for Disney and Hasbro. Let me show you some examples. You have heard of TF2, but let me introduce you to Blitz Brigade, a class-based shooter with iconic mercs such as Stealth, Gunner, Demolisher, <laughs> Engineer? <laughs> GTA? Nah, I'd be on that Gangstar Vegas. Forza Horizon? More like Asphalt 9. In this video, I'll be going over Gameloft and their empire built upon stealing other people's ideas. So first, let's talk about Gameloft's history. Gameloft was founded by... Uh, Michael Goylemot? One of the five founders of Ubisoft. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Anyways, Gameloft defines themselves as pioneers of video game creation since the 2000s. And right below this statement, you have Asphalt 9, Sonic Runners, and Ice Age Village. Truly some of the most innovating games of our time. Anywho, Gameloft's history besides that is not very well documented, so now I'm just going to talk about their games. Their games are actually relatively good. Well, basically, when 90% of the app store is just Smash 3 games that have some weird pregnancy law behind them, it's not that hard for a company with more than 3,000 employees to make what count as a good game. But this upper hand doesn't stop them from trying their hardest to rob you every living second you spent on their games. Almost all their games are either pay to win or pay to play, or if you're lucky, both. The games themselves are not exactly perfect or above average even, but they are brought down even more by the sheer amount of microtransactions and advertisements they have. Now I don't really mind cosmetic transactions in a game, but what Gameloft does is that they create a handicap in the game and then make it so the only way to resolve it is by paying money. For example, while making this video, I play one of their games called Linda Brown. It's one of those choose your own adventure games where the gameplay consists of picking things to wear and clicking on dialogue options. You know, the kind of game that has incredibly weird advertisements. What do you mean by that? Anywho, in this game, there is this one scene where you can pick up a phone call from a future love interest, but it requires gems, and the game purposefully forced you to spend gems in a previous scene. So now, the whole point of the game, it being that you can create your own story, is ruined because you have no say in what happens in the story unless you start spending money on it. And mind you, all this is happening in the first 30 minutes of gameplay. There is nothing wrong with microtransactions in general, but the problem is that Gameloft makes it so all the transactions are not just something for the fans to support the developer, but more so things that are required if you want to experience more than 5% of the game. I kid you not, I've seen better advertisement and microtransaction practices from indie developers. You know, the people who could actually use the extra money? They decide it would be too scummy to shove an ad in your face every time you open the menu, but Game Loft though? No, 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 they, they need all the money in the world. Okay, so before I talk about their games, I need to show you guys something. Uh, you, you see, this is my eviction notice. It's it's very real, as you can tell. So, uh, can you guys please subscribe and join my Discord to uh, money, money, money? Now, I am going to review their games, starting from Gangster Vegas. Gangster Vegas is a lot like GTA, and I don't mean that as in, oh, you can get in cars and kill people, this is the new Dark Souls. No, uh, but really, this game is pretty much the only relatively good GTA alternative on the App Store. The game itself has a fairly big but empty open world. As you can see from the map, there is a lot of things you can do in the open world, but almost all of them cost real money. Oh, you found a loot crate? Well, you better be ready to pay us gems to open it. Oh, you use all your gems to unlock story levels? Well, you can always buy more gems. You get the drift, that's basically every side quest in this game. But really, the focus of the game is the story mode. And yes, this game does have a story. Now, I've played this game many times when I was a child, but I've never finished it because I would always get to the point where the guns the game gave me were just too weak or I wouldn't be able to level up enough to unlock new levels. But I do know the gist of the story. You play as uh, Ryan Gosling? And you're told by a mob boss that you need to go down in a fight because he has a lot of money bet against you. You understand what I'm saying? You, down, in the fourth. Now you and your big testosterone arms accidentally knock out the other guy. 
And now the mob is after you and they want to kill you in your sleep. So you call one of your family friends called Vera. She is the old woman, but you know, she still has it type of character. And in her first scene, she squishes some guy's balls. Basically, she owns half the city. This is Karen. She is a love interest sent by Vera to save you. I'm guessing you're the one who called? Yeah. The rest of the game is basically you doing missions for people to earn back your freedom. We can protect your kid, but uh, you're gonna have to work to earn that protection. Them's the rules. One of my earners named E-Man might be able to use you. So something I like about the story mode is the characters. Not all of them, but some of them I do like. I really like E-Man, he's this conspiracy theorist who also cooks meth. And his voice actor is one of the few that actually does a good job with his lines. E-Man? Sometimes, sure, okay. Sometimes not so much. Depends upon your perspective, I guess. Right. Karen is the badass, she ain't need no man. And honestly, they do flesh her out later in the game and show us that even though she's a criminal, she has a very strong moral code. I really like that kind of stuff, so uh, 5 out of 1.2. Good job, gang, you got a star. Honorable mentions are probably Racer Girl. We don't see her much, but uh, she's hot and also p personality or something. Racer Girl, how are you, my darling? I'd be better if I had some of your bitches, Brew. A new batch. And then you have Ronnie Q, who is this witty psychopath. She has some really funny lines, but also she pays you to kill people, whilst she makes some really questionable noises. That was amazing. So uh, yeah, the ten out of ten character. And what I don't like is the general writing. Sometimes the writing is fine. Muscle. Speaking of illegal underground street races. When were you talking about illegal underground street races? We're talking about them. Right now. Muscle, keep up. But other times, it feels like the characters are being held at gunpoint and asked to explain their backstory. I've known guys like Frank my whole life. Back in Boston, there was a jerk off just like him who thought loyalty was a one way street. Sure, he'll play nice while it's in his interest, but the next thing you know, your brother's dead buying a one-way ticket to Las Vegas just to keep it I'm done So yeah, it's a mixed bag. Now, you might be saying that maybe the gameplay makes up for the story. It doesn't. I don't know why you would think that. It doesn't. The driving is mid. So some cars feel good to drive around. Others make you want to quit living. The gunplay is garbage. Some of this is due to the game being on mobile and me not being very good at aiming. But also, it's just not that fun. The enemies are tanky and the guns just feel bad. The melee is atrocious. It is so hard to have a single fight without trading HP that the Gulag minigame where you fight waves of people is literally a game of how much money you can spend on health items because the melee damage is a game of luck, not skill. And now I don't want to be unfair, the game is free. Sure, it has a lot of ads and if you want to play the game without paying Gameloft money, you will literally die trying. But it's free and for that price tag, a game that has a story mode and side quests, it's a bargain. It's so good, in fact, that Gameloft made two other gangster games. Yeah, yay. I'm not gonna talk about them, though. Uh, now, Gangster Vegas is actually a surprisingly big game, and it can be a video on its own, so I'm just going to move along to the next game. Linda Brown. Linda Brown is a romance game where you click on dialogue options and pretend like you're the main character and people actually want to go out with you. It's funny because it's true. What's unique about this game compared to all the other games in this genre is that the art style looks like it's AI generated. The facial animations just don't feel right. It's like a game made by skinwalkers. Besides that, the story is generic love triangle stuff. Man likes girl, but man cheats, girl breaks up with man, another man likes girl, a third man likes girl, girl has to choose who to go out with. Yeah, the story is honestly miserable. The only people that would be interested in this game are children and single women above 30. Children, because of the lewd advertisements, and all the ladies because they are obsessed with the idea of seven men fighting each other for one woman. Now in good old game slop fashion, the whole game is filled with ads that pop up whenever anything happens. But worry not, there is also gems. If you want to make certain choices in the game, you need gems. These are not small choices by the way. They're not choices like, oh, should I say hi or hello? No, 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 they're big choices. 
big choices that affect the game in meaningful ways, and yet they are locked behind gem walls. There are also tickets, which means you can't play too much of the game all at once, but rather you have to wait until they regenerate. Unless, of course, you have money. So honestly, this game really doesn't have too much to offer. I couldn't bear more than two chapters of it, so uh, yeah, let's move on to the next game. The TF2 ripoff. How is it? I don't want to repeat myself, but everything wrong with the ads and the microtransactions in the previous games, yeah, also bad in this game. However, this game is substantially more fun. So you have different classes to choose from, but as you start the game, you only have two unlocked. Hitler and Heavy. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to mention. This game has some very weird themes. Like the red team have their own flag and it's in red and black. And the soldier for the red team is, uh, well, he is literally an SS soldier. So yeah, take that as you will, I guess. The game itself is, uh, pretty dead. I went into two matches and both of them had less than five players. In one of the matches, it was just me and another guy. And I absolutely ruined his day. Five kills, no deaths. That man has probably stopped playing video games altogether. He, he has he has got a job. He works at McDonald's now. I destroyed him in, in like a, I don't know, 10 year old game that no one cares about. But I did it though. So yeah, everything wrong with the previous games. Still wrong with this one. But overall, more fun experience. Uh, also, you can taunt people in this game. So uh, 10 out of conga line taunts. So the last game I want to talk about is the My Little Pony game. Now, I'm going to be real, I didn't have high hopes for this game, but this is worse than I would have ever imagined. So the game starts with the same storyline as the show. You know, the sun and moon god live in harmony, but then the Chaos Emeralds get captured by Robotnik, and the world falls into eternal darkness, and one fairy creature has to try to fix it all. Oh no, wait, that's, a, that's the plot for Sonic Unleashed. But their plots are basically quite similar. Now, the game itself is, uh... Clash of Clans? You basically spend time rebuilding Ponyville and bringing your friends back into town. This game isn't too awful. It is still pay to win, but at this point I've stopped fighting it and I'm just accepting it, honestly. Now the ponies from the show actually have voice lines, and surprisingly enough, a lot of the voice actors from the actual show show up in the game. Wow, Twilight! You played so well, you earned a star! So, uh, that's pretty nice, I guess. The main gameplay loop here is to just expand your territory, build things, and play with the ponies. Yeah, there are, like, these small mini-games you can have, and honestly, I enjoyed them more than the actual game. So, yeah, uh, I basically unlocked Fluttershy and then stopped playing. While it was not necessarily one of my favorite games, I have seen people enjoy this game, so, uh, if, if you're a fan of the show, maybe give it a try. You might like it. Gameloft is one of the biggest game developers on mobile devices, and while their games are much better than their competitors, they don't see themselves above using the same scummy tactics used in any other cash grab game made in less than a week. Seeing some of their games makes me think that there are still people at Gameloft that care about what they make, but the majority of the people there have no intention of making good games, but rather just filling a quota to maximize Gameloft's income. Researching this video has made me realize that no matter how high quality a game is, it cannot compete with a game that has even the slightest bit of passion behind it. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and bye.